What is happening out there? Excuse me. Can you use the force to get rid of the sound? Thank you. Hi, friends. If you click to join me for another Get Ready With Me, then please keep a watching. Hi, I'm Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for clicking on my video. And if you are returning, well, thank you for visiting me again. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I'm a fitness professional who loves things, all movement and beauty. If you want to check out what I do in between the makeup, so you can head over to my Instagram. I haven't done a Get Ready With Me for quite some time, and I thought why not drop another one, go over maybe some new products, I recently purchased, received in PR, and drop into the Celestial Divinity palette from Pat McGrath. I saw she is releasing a Divine Rose line. I know some of us might be disappointed because she is, she's milking the Divine Rose theme, okay? Just like Charlotte does for Pillow Talk, so you know what? Pat McGrath wants to do that, I'll let her do that. I will, however, this is just a minor request. We'll love to see Pat McGrath expand on the Midnight Sun theme. I know it might not be as compelling or as interesting as Divine Rose. I beg to differ. There are a lot of things you can pull from Midnight Sun in terms of texture and color, vibe, and mood. But you know what? It will remain as wishful thinking for now, so why not drop into this palette? It's been a while, and if you happen to have it, we'll go over different ways we could use it. You know, get these looks in order. I also want to give a huge shout out to the team over at Shantikai. They were so nice in sending me their new Cushion Foundation PR. Look at this bag. I mean, first of all, it has the elephant on the front because every cushion foundation you purchase, I believe, supports a baby elephant. It gives one bottle of milk to an orphan baby elephant rescued by the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. I have a brochure here on the cushion, so we'll get further into that when we roll into the product. But oh my gosh, can you even... Dying. You have a huge... Hey there. You have a huge mirror and I have all the Shantakai products. Maybe we'll do a little bit of Shanta Shanta, you know, while in the get ready with me. And also speaking about products that I had recently reviewed to give them another shot, give them another chance on camera. Well, that said, why don't you come in a little closer? <gasps> That's enough. I wanted to quickly speak on the inky list where is it? Old Cleansing Balm. I had put this in the rehearsal studio <laughs> in my last favorites, but I wanted to revisit it, speak about it briefly, and just get ready with me because many of you had kindly suggested different ways to use it. Many of you had expressed your favoring opinion on this cleanser, and I didn't quite understand it because like many of you, I immediately noticed the residue left behind, and that freaked me out. I didn't think it was great. I was like, what is the hoopla about? But then I started using it again, and Nate, what's going on, Nate? Nate was so nice to suggest how they used it, and I actually did this also, but I stopped doing it because I thought it was dumb. I'm like, why are you doing this, Alicia? They used the oat cleansing balm after their first wash, and I thought, well, you know what? That's not a bad idea. Just so that the skin is left behind, moisturized, and not dehydrated, and I do go in with an essence. However, I feel when you go in with the oat cleansing balm, and I know I was eliminating the double cleanse step, I know, forgive me. When going in with the oat cleansing balm after your first wash, your face is super wet and that extra water presence helps to emulsify the balm even more and it doesn't leave behind as aggressive as a residue like before. I also like to use it in the morning when my skin is feeling a little dry. I also like to use it before I go in for a wash. And the reason I appreciate that is because when I get out of the shower, I don't do my skincare right away. I immediately go in with product because my hair just behaves better when it's super wet when applying product in a rake through method. And then I apply my skincare thereafter, but for the duration of that time when my skin starts to dry, it doesn't dry completely. It doesn't feel rough because if I use the oat cleansing balm first, shower, wash, rake through products, my skin's actually okay. And I'm like, okay, you know what? 
I found a way to fit this in mainly because I didn't want to throw it out. I just wanted to finish it, right? And at the end of me finishing this product, if I feel if I had a change of heart, I will let you guys know if I choose to buy it again or not. But wanted to share that because if you have this product and you are like me and you just couldn't align with it and you hated it, I always like to give products a second chance. That's why I never like to label them as fails unless it's like super, super bad. I think giving them a period of time where you work with them and figure it out, use them in different scenarios can really change your perspective on them. And that's why I call it the rehearsal studio, okay? So Oat Cleansing Balm, still in the rehearsal studio, still trying it. Will they be granted a featured role? I don't know. I'll let you know when it's showtime for them, okay? Well, that was a long little tangent. Getting into the Shantikai cushion. This is very expensive, okay? $128, which is not a surprise. Shantikai is a luxury product line, is a smaller brand. But what is compelling about this product is that it's cushion foundation, with a reasonable shade range. And I say reasonable because usually with cushion foundations where it's not high, high coverage, you can get away with covering a good portion of the skin tone spectrum with one shade. And they came out with a super deep shade. I think it's called Espresso. It looks promising. So I can't wait for one who has that complexion shade to try this foundation. I think Vicky J has it. So anyone who is deeper than her tries it. I cannot wait to see how it looks. Perhaps one of the reasons why this might be successful is because it doesn't have SPF in it. And while I understand cushion foundations are typically known to be a skincare and makeup product in one, usually you find SPF in a cushion foundation and that's what a lot of Koreans and Japanese uh, makeup wearers rely on for their sun protection. I wouldn't necessarily still rely on this for sun protection. I like to put that on separately and my makeup thereafter because of the reasons I explained in my Shiseido Radiant Lifting Radiant lifting link. Where is it? I don't know which side I'm pointing to. Video if you want to check that out. And because of that, if it does not contain zinc oxide and titanium dioxide, there's a much better chance that the shades will not have a strange gray undertone, which could happen when you include those ingredients in the formulation. So slap on your sun protection first and then go in with the cushion. And of course, Shantikai loves to integrate philanthropy in their brand. So again, one cushion equals to one bottle of milk for an orphan baby elephant, which is why we got the little elephant here on the compact. With this product, we're supporting our longtime conservation partner, Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, in their successful orphan elephant rehabilitation program and safeguarding of natural habitats for all species across Kenya. And here are all the shades. Now, I was given agave. I thought I would have been wheat. Wheat is medium bronze with balanced undertones. Agave, medium dark with golden undertones. And I tuned in to the online event between Angela Bartel, who I had on my channel. Thank you so much again, Angela, for the opportunity. And Alex Shantikai explaining the cushion foundation, the formulation. They said this is a little more coverage than their highly coveted, highly loved future skin. Oh, for crying out loud. I don't know where my Shantikai future skin is, fam. So, you know what? Oh, Jerry, I smashed him by accident. When I do the full-on review video, I will have the Shantikai for comparison swatches, okay? But for now, I just wanted to do another round of first impress. I applied this last night and I was like, oh, it looks very warm upon application. So, just wanted to let you know, this is what the color looks like. Usually with cushions, the makeup is in the sponge. And, that, and that's what we're dealing with. Angela said this was the toughest shade to formulate. And, um, you know, around this part of the skin tone spectrum, I, I get it. It can be very tricky. Taking the poof, the puff, I'm going to start pressing it onto my skin like so. And you see that the warmth is quite prominent on the first round. I could also use a brush on the other side of my face so you can see how that goes 
but I want to apply it on one side first. It feels like you're applying water. It's actually quite refreshing, very lightweight. Uh, there's no fragrance that is detectable. And again, cushion makeup combines that of makeup and skincare benefits. It looks like um, I was on vacation, maybe. And it looks like I've been stuck in a cave all this time. I wore it yesterday. I applied concealer and all of that. And it evened itself out. I don't know how it did. But again, with the concealer and maybe some blush and whatever... Let me apply the other side. Going in with my Isum T47, punching the brush right in. This, I feel, gives a lighter application than the puff does. The puff definitely picks up more product, but what you can do if you have a brush is to stipple it on the portions that need a little more coverage. You can layer it successfully without it looking heavy on the skin. And I do think it quite luminous and radiant in finish. I could definitely identify like that glow, but my skin doesn't look greasy. But you can see <laughs> with the rest of my neck, Agave, you know, agave could be a little too warm for me and I might just buy wheat, you know, just so I could grab it and wear it. I have to do my ears too so everything doesn't look uh, not cohesive. Just so you can have a better idea of the shade. Going in with the puff for this portion of my face to get a little more coverage. I love how it blends. It sinks into the skin and the skin looks like itself it looks fresh okay going in with their real skin in number four w i'm placing that on the under eyes as well as the portions that could use a little more highlighting and seeing if we could maybe balance out the color of agave now the formula is great the formula I really like. I have to keep using it. I want to apply it again tomorrow because it's going to be, you know, a, a out and about type of a day, okay? We're going to have another round of strength training and since we'll be at the gym, I'll have my mask on and we can better, you know, get a sense of how this wears throughout the day. A little better, but you can still detect that that warmth here on my cheeks, although for W kind of evened out the center of my face. It doesn't look as uh, off. It leaves the skin looking dewy, but it doesn't feel over emollient. So that's a really nice sign. Many of you had kindly suggested 280 for the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation when we were all trying to figure out like what could Alicia be. I originally bought 300. I did not return it. I still have it. I'll I'll keep using it because you know I don't. I'm trying to not return as much makeup although i know i can like i definitely know my right as a consumer for you to say some of you had said that listen you could return it i'm absolutely i'm just trying not to be super wasteful with the makeup so i'll use both most definitely going in with beautylicious lunar new year year of the Oc now with fenty's 280 if you want to take a look at a swatch that definitely is a better match for me. Maybe if we apply it over the Chantecaille, it will kind of tone it down a little bit. We might be onto something, fam. Now, initially when I reviewed this foundation, I wasn't crazy about it on it. I felt like it didn't knock my socks off when applying it directly on my skin. In fact, I felt like I had to build it up a lot with a brush application to get the coverage I was looking for. But when applied over another foundation, this is where the texture really shines. It gives you a little more coverage without looking heavy. There's no texture left behind. It melts into, you know, whatever formula you choose to apply on and it just works with your skin and that product. So we applied it over the Chantecaille, but you see here, even the even though the dewiness kind of dialed down a little bit, I feel I still have a bit of radiance. You know what I'm saying? Many of you had asked what will be the equivalent in the Danessa Bomb Contour to the Tom Ford Intensity Number no. 2. I was going back and forth with these fam because 
the Tom Ford uh, formula for the illuminating and what it, what is this called? Shade and Illuminate Duo is exquisite, exquisite. And I wanted to demo this on camera. So this is Intensity 2. I feel this color has like a tawniness to it. It's almost like a ruddiness. Compared to Medium 3 from Danessa, I feel has a little more brown to it. It was hard for me to identify the the actual difference, but you know what? This is why we're here. So this is intensity number two, and then we'll go in with a bomb number three, but this is intensity number two. I just wanted to swatch it on my arm so you could take a look. Give this brush a good wipe so we can see what medium three is gonna give us. Take a look at that swatch. You see how you could detect a little more red from the Tom Ford swatch. Now let's go in with medium three on this side, which I think has a little more punch than Tom Ford. So if anything, if anything, if you feel this color is too intimidating, yeah, uh, intensity two is a dream to blend out, but so is the bomb contour, I feel. I'm not picking up any more product. I'm pulling it up and around the brow and towards the forehead here. This is Tom Ford. And this is the Danessa Medium 3. Again, I think there's a little more neutral brown here in the Medium 3 versus the Tom Ford. So if you want some of that red, which is not necessarily warm, I think definitely has like that burnt look, whereas Danessa's is more of a traditional uh, brown shade. Not as warm as I think the Tom Ford. So here, I just wanted to show you both. What do you think? And I'm sorry, fam, that I haven't been doing my vlogs. I just, ugh, I want to do them in a way that's interesting. And sometimes I get overwhelmed. I get too ambitious and I just don't do it. But I got a new little Sony camera because my ugh, Canon G7X broke. I don't know what happened. It was on a tripod. I was clumsy. I knocked it over. And when I click on it, the lens just stops midway. It doesn't turn on completely. And I've had it for quite some time. I probably could get it repaired, but I just got a new camera. <laughs> because my last vlog, it was actually during a snowstorm and I got really nice footage. So I might include some of that in my next one just because I don't want it to go to waste. That was a little tricky to film, okay? And of course I will melt it in with, you know, the current vlog that I want to do. And I haven't been able to fly my drone because it's been very cold and some days are really windy and it could not be a good situation for my little aircraft. And it was acting weird last time, so I just kind of want to take it out to see if it sinks again. But you know what? Springtime is coming in a couple of months, but it's coming. So better days will arrive for drone flying. Let me just chill out with that and i caved i caved and got the rare beauty stay vulnerable melting blush in nearly neutral i strolled into sephora i saw the new products and i was like okay fine i wanted to buy a few shades but i'm like do you really need to no you don't so i just bought one and i'm happy i bought nearly neutral because this is probably one of my most favorite types of colors it's a a medium pink but it leans more like brownie pink which you know I'm all about all about taking my little Koyuto brush straight in and tapping that over I and you know what I am using this little mirror just just enough to see where the brush is going on my face like seriously friend yeah you know that's what, what are you gonna do texture's really nice there's no fragrance to the product it melts into the skin full proof solid product solid product from rare beauty and i want to quickly mention when i was deciding between buying the rare beauty launch and the suku and i was like you know i'm not in this celebrity makeup lines i don't want to discredit the message selena gomez is delivering with this brand i appreciate what's behind it in terms of loving yourself and you are beautiful and makeup is not to cover up but to enhance and the inner this and the inner that that's great i love that and i just wanted to make that very clear that in me not buying her line is not me believing in her message i just had to choose okay and i chose the suku 
instead. But I thought I will buy the melting blush. This is a good, this is a nice product. It dries down to like a matte finish. It feels emollient when you pick it up, but it, it dries down, maybe I would say soft matte. So, you know, very easy to use. And I think optimal for one who is not looking to who doesn't like cream products because they're scared of them. The Tower 28 has a little more pigmentation and a little more grab, which I prefer, but I don't mind the color. And I'm just punching everything in with the T47. All right, let's throw in some brow gel. This is, of course, the Benefit 24-hour brow setter. I saw Danessa use this in her workshop. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get it. And then the Precisely My Brow in shade 2.5. I usually use 3.5, but I've been liking to use a smaller, lighter shade for brows. You know, if I wanted something softer, and I feel 2.5 is an ideal shade for me. And I'm looking forward to Samantha Ravendell's a new line, Auric. That looks Busy bomb. I might get like three shades, which is not practical whatsoever, but it is giving me major Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood flawless filter vibes. And I love that product. And Samantha has always been about, you know, radiant, luminous skin, highlight this, highlight that. And for that product to be the first in her line alongside those shadow pots is rather exciting. So I cannot wait to grab those on the 26th very impractical for me to get three absolutely i would not recommend anyone to do the same i just i just want to share with you friends i just want to share okay i did not give shantakai love for these lippies they sent these these to me a few months ago and i just failed to say thank you on here these are the the lip veils i think this was like a, a special release again with the but the elephants, these shades are just darling. And I kept them in the box because, I mean, they're so pretty. Plumeria is so pretty. The Lip Veil has a color, but it's also bomb feeling. Isn't that so pretty? I'm not crazy about pinks but I like this one. Maybe because it's a little mauve Tamarind, I like also, maybe let's combine the two. Here a little bit, let's tap it around on top of Plumeria. Ooh, I like that. Going in with Danessa's Invisible Shadow Base, I'm trying this out. It feels really silicone-y in nature, but I like that it's just easy to apply. I don't have to, you know, squeeze anything out. Just slap it on. The disadvantage to using something like this, however, is if you have major discoloration on your lids, this is not going to combat that. It's just going to rather provide a smoother canvas for shadows to glide on, not, you know, cover up any of those veins you might have on the lids. And if you're doing like super pigmented looks, I guess, you know, if you were to think about Danessa's lines, that's why she has the color fixes for, which are so bold in color and in formulation that you don't need a primer. Like, those are <laughs> the primers. But with regular shadow, I thought I would give this a shot. And I don't know if by the time I upload this, it'll be tomorrow, but tomorrow is my birthday. Or as Mariah Carey likes to say, anniversary. It's kind of crazy that I'm gonna be <laughs> 36 years old. I feel strange because there are a lot of people my age who don't live at home with their parents like I do, who already have kids. I often question the path that I took. It's unconventional, not to say that it's wrong or right. It's just different. And I am the only child, but anytime I, like when I was traveling and staying over my friend's house, like you always clean up after yourself. You always offer to help out. You always you know, you want to contribute. And I feel that a lot of people, which they rightly assume if you are the only child that you are spoiled and really can't take care of yourself. Maybe you don't think that, maybe you do. I always 
stop myself all the time to remind myself how lucky I am that I still have my mom and dad, that they're okay with me here, that they're cool with me teaching from their living room, that I totally just took over and changed it to my personal little studio. But I'm so grateful for them and for their understanding. But I get it, I get it in my own head sometimes and I'm like, should you have done better? Absolutely, I should have financially done better. I bought way too much makeup and not to say that buying luxury is bad. There are a lot of people who are like, well, you should know better. Absolutely, but I think the lesson I learned is that you have to make sure you have enough to save and to cover all your base expenses and then if you have left over, have fun with it. I was having too much fun and not covering the basics. I learned that now and I'm so happy I'm in a position to still splurge on luxury here and there, but I also realize how how lucky I am to have my fam. Uh, you know, will I eventually have kids? I don't know, fam. When I see my friends with their kids, I get a little stressed, okay? I get a little stressed and I'm like, I don't know if I want to be responsible for taking care of a human at this moment in time. This is oversharing, but sh- hear, hear me out. At this moment in time, I'm so into the notion of of growth and I love the fact that I can you know, do what I need to do and not worry about getting a babysitter or, or, or this or that. But it's kind of strange because since we all had to slow down, um, I do have a lot of time, but the notion of teaching my kids math or just one kid, why am I giving myself more? is overwhelming and shout out to all the moms out there and the papas, okay? All the parents out there who are doing it or or all those who have to take a role as a parent if they're an aunt or an uncle or or cousin you know family situations are vast and they could be very different but you know what those who step up to the plate and are making it happen so these little ones can thrive the best that they can in a healthy loving environment shout out to you celestial divinity who has it oh we're almost at 80k fam Whoa, Pat actually sent me this palette. So I have a lot of palettes on stowaway for a giveaway. So stay tuned for that. I know this is old and maybe no one wants it anymore, but you never know. You never know. Koyudo, I think this is the number three eyeshadow brush because the number four is slightly bigger. I love these little brushes. They're just the best, the best. The question is, what do I want to start with? I think I want to go hardcore and just stick with like the reds. You know, go here first, maybe here, there, and then, uh, and then maybe there, here? I don't know, we'll see. Major mahogany right at the corner. Just tap it, tap, tap. You gotta come in closer. I don't, I don't like this. You're too far away. Carving outside the lid. Let me deal with this eye first, cause I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with the other eye. Saturnalia, which is found in the Star Wars Dark Galaxy palette. So if you have that palette already. You don't have this one. You could dip into Saturnalia and the outer corner could be just like a deep red brown matte from whatever single or palette that you have. Tapping that on. Oh my goodness, these shades. Bronze on the inner part of the eye overlapping Saturnalia. And a huge shout out to you friends who have been taking my classes. Thank you so much for giving me a chance. I know it's hard when... You hear someone say, I teach, I teach. And you're like, well, am I going to like it? And for you to carve out time to see what it's about, it it just means so much. Because I get it. When you're not sure and you're like, should I even try? And, and you risk, possibly, I get it, wasting your time. If you feel what I had to offer wasn't for you or what have you, and you just don't want to go through that, no one ever wants to be disappointed but for you to take that chance and for you to actually like it and to continue coming and and to make the effort when you can it just means the world and i thank you all so much it's like it's so much fun to see you in real life i know still virtually but as one body and face and not just as like a 
a username on a social media platform is amazing. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Fiery. Eat some W21. I want to go in with like a fun shade on the inner part of the eye. I could do gold standard, but I think I might want to roll in with galactic gold, is that? Yes. This is great for picking up, you know, finicky textures, but this does it just fine. And I'm pulling it a little bit under and through the lower lash line and up towards the lid. Corruption, most definitely. This is a special shade. When I first encountered it in Bronze Temptation for her Holiday Palace, I think that released maybe two years ago. Oh, this is just beautiful. Pulling it through here a little lower than usual. I want to, you know, make this hazy. And this is my Sonya G Blender Pro. Whisking the edges here so they could look fluffy. Look, look at this. I think this is so pretty. So freaking pretty. Now we're gonna go like the the whole other way, but I want to use not the matte, but some of these to build out the whole eye. I think I wanna start off with Violet Void, this shade here as our outer outer lid moment. Grogu agrees. Taking that same coil brush, tapping it on the outer part of the eye this brush is a mixture of i believe goat and squirrel i'm not entirely sure i could confirm down below when i link it it just has great great product pickup but blending capabilities like no other it's your perfect one and done brush especially if you're looking to just use one shade across the lid and through the crease it will get the color there and blend it beautifully in no time. Like, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Ooh, I think I gotta go in with Fuchsia Shock. Most definitely. Right on the center here. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, this is a great palette. I know it's not her most luxurious feeling palette in terms of the packaging 100% fam I agree with you but the quality of the shadows across the board like I cannot Electron which has you know like corruption that zoochrome flip on the inner part of the lid overlapping fuchsia shock I love how that looks I love that gradient so beautiful I think I have to take a little bit of smoke amethyst Add a little, uh, just a touch bit more schmirk on the outer part of the lid. I'm going in with my Sonya G Blender Pro with that for a bit more depth. And actually, let me pick up some of this matte Venetian Orchid to smoke out the edges of just everything towards and near the brow. Being very careful with this because I don't want to overdo it. I mean, smoke amethyst, as you see. I mean, it's smoky, okay? I don't want to overblend these shadows. I just want to give them a light gradient, something to work with. Going in with my Koyuto brush with Venetian Orchid, more in the inner part of the lid. Odyssey, most definitely. This shade has a little more texture than the others here, but Picking that up with my Isum W23 brush and cutting across the lower lash line with that. Tapping in a little bit of smoke amethyst just so I could bring that up towards the lid. So it could be a clear movement of color, you know, the, the dark to the light. I'm just gonna fix that a little. Oh wow, it just started to snow. Hmm. It just, it just started coming down well look at that low weather cosmic most definitely both on the inner corner as well as the lower inner lash line just wrap it right around there all right hang on tight let's put on this mascara bought another dark star because i mean what what else am i going to use really dare i say this is kind of like a uh, more low-key bronze seduction eye because Blitz Flame could be a lot, but the tone of Saturnalia is, I think, 
just not as aggressive and Major Mahogany, I feel, leaves more a true brown red versus disobedient or is it corruption? No, corruption was that other shade. I forgot, I forgot the name, but the browns and bronze seduction are like super, super smoky. This I feel is like intermediate smoky, which I deem to be a whole lot more daily friendly. I put it back in the box because I have another dark star lurking around and to distinguish both, I need to make sure I know which one's the old and the news I could throw away. The old one and now the new one, you know how that goes. And that is the final look fan from this get ready with me. Thank you for hanging out and just joining in on the conversation on the several topics that I brought up in this video. I'm still trying to figure out if I want to start a Patreon or not and in terms of what type of content I want to show on there. I mentioned this before, I'm desperately trying to make my reviews shorter. I find that I get so much into detail that I sabotage myself and first timers to my channel might not be accustomed to the longer video so they might not watch it and therefore really trying to restructure my reviews. Well, I don't want them to be one and done. I want to give you as much perspective as possible, but try to figure out the best structure for the presentation so I can give you those details, but wrap it up quickly. And the longer videos maybe I could put on my Patreon. So I'm still trying to figure out and your feedback is always most welcome. Let me know what you think down below. I appreciate you joining. And until then fam, that is. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And until then, I will see you on here again with another review tutorial. Get ready with me. Monthly favorites or nightly live chit chat. Take care and I will see you again soon.